Hi, um, this is your weekly yoga solutions live. Uh, how are you doing on this lovely day? Um, my garden is amazing, so I'm, I'm very happy. Uh, it's been amazing weather, really lucky. I uh, had, a, had a lovely time at um, Ex Exhale Festival. I was only able to go for the day because we have, have um, lots of things to do before we go off to Italy. But um, yes, it was lovely. Uh, I was given a nice two-hour spot so I could share my stuff with people, which is really good. And um, yes, and we were blessed with lovely weather. So um, anyway, I hope you can hear me okay. Um, who's here? Hello, Anna Kishori. Nice to see you again. How to release tightness in the front of the thighs, contraction in the back of the knees that prevents kneeling. Yes. Uh, okay, that's, uh, that's quite a good topic. Um, yeah, before I start, uh, uh, I just want to say I'm, I'm myself and Abigail. We're off to um, teach our amazing intensive retreat in um, Italy next week. Uh, well, this this weekend coming um, uh, up in the hills in in Sabina. Uh, it's uh, we've got a full retreat, of course, and it's um, so we're really looking forward to that. And then I'm I'm hanging out for a, uh, a few days to work with one of my significant teachers Diane Long and um, that must be a bit of, a bit of indulgence for me it should be really nice um, so that means I won't be here for, for two weeks um, uh, so uh, and so I don't forget what have we got coming up um, let's see okay oh yes we're coming up to uh, Edinburgh uh, I, I, I uh, when I started the, the training courses I, I started uh, one of the places I started was in Edinburgh. I did one in Edinburgh and one in Brighton. And um, uh, we moved to Stirling a few years ago because it was between Edinburgh and Glasgow. And now we're moving back to Edinburgh. And it's because uh, there's this amazing studio called Santosha or Santosa. Um, so, um, yes, we're, uh, our, our courses, uh, and they're not just teacher training courses. They're, they're sort of yoga development courses for, for teachers, for for anyone that, that is interested in deepening their yoga, um, where the courses are commencing, we have intake dates on in January and uh, September next year. Because um, the thing is modular, so you, there's at a certain points you can come in. Um, but uh, in order to join, you need to have worked with me directly um, at least once, uh, almost or, or Abigail. And uh, so we're coming up to uh, Edinburgh in October. We're doing a um, two days workshop, one, um, one each. Uh, I'm doing a Saturday, the 28th, I think, or 27th. I don't know. It, it, it's, uh, um, it's the weekend, the 20 something of October. Uh, I'll, I'll have details up on the website soon. Uh, so I'll be doing um, an introductory workshop uh, so you get a flavor of what it's like to spend a, spend a day with me. If you want to, um, if you're thinking of uh, working with me on a more regular basis, and uh, on the Sunday, uh, Abigail is running a pelvic health workshop for for women. Um, so, um, and and uh, you'll have an amazing experience if you want to um, work. If you want to um, unravel complications in your pelvis, uh, Abigail's got a very good handle on uh, how to do that and, and she it's a safe space so that's why she's made it for women only so you can get right in there and and, and change some stuff uh, if you go to either of those days it qualifies you to to be able to um, join uh, one of our one of our courses up in Edinburgh um, but um, uh, space space permitting we're, we're, we're having very limited numbers I, I like to keep the, the the sort of closeness of the group tight so that we um, it's not too dispersed and, and so that everyone everyone's supported in their journey so um, there's only a few, there's not that many places left to be honest but um, if you're interested come along uh, towards the end of October I'm also doing um, um, the joint clinic is moving to Edinburgh as well we, we just love this place so we're going to I'm going to move everything to there and I think I've got one on the 20th of October so Friday so it's going to be an afternoon workshop um, two till five I think uh, that seems to I think there'll be more um, compatible for people's traveling and stuff so that's all the promo stuff um, done um, letting you know what what's going on uh, yes, because I'll be away for two weeks, so I won't be able to tell you about things. And um, I would get in there soon if I were you. Yeah. Okay. So, um, 
Yes, what to do? <clears throat> Let's see. So, um, hi, 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 Kishore. Yes. Release tightness in fronts of front, th fronts of thighs and contraction is preventing bleeding. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, some leg stuff. Okay. Uh, I would like to do a little bit of breathing first, to be honest, because um, when we're when we're working on limbs, it only really um, it's only really effective when when um, the action of the limbs is is related to breathing. Um, it's related to functionality, as in support and walking and that sort of thing, which is uh, uh, great because you're, you're always interested in functionality. Um, so a little bit of breathing first, just to set the stage. So wherever you are, you can, you can lie down if, if, if you're not comfortable sitting, you can lie down. Um, it's quite nice if, if you have a chair or some back uh, to you, as long as you're not sort of slumped back into a sort of sofa position. If you've got a surface behind you of some kind, it can be useful. Um, if you if you haven't, you can use the space behind you as if it is a surface. It's actually slightly more effective than if there was something to kind of lean against. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to just um, relax and be for a moment and, and follow the breath. So to do this, you need to come out of the front of the head and move into a position of looking behind and it's quite good to get into your peripheral vision so that you start to sort of almost listen to space uh, you can start with the corner of the eyes and if you've got a bit of sunshine there it's nice you get a sort of smiley feeling going on and then a, a sort of widening from the temples as you start to get into your peripheral uh, vision and your connection to the space either side of you and imagine that's where the breath arrives. And as you as you do that, you should find a, a sort of a lifting and a movement back in space. So if, as that happens, uh, you imagine there's a surface to touch, and you can you can put your hand there. Um, it's quite useful as long as you as long as you don't get tight in your shoulder. It's a it's a point of support, you see. So as you get into the peripheral vision, as you breathe, if you, as you listen and breathe wide and meet to the surface behind your head, it becomes a sort of celebration. It becomes an embrace of touch behind you and either side of you. There's a widening and the embrace, and the embrace of the space behind the, your head, which gives you support. So it's not, it's not just a fight between your hand and your head it's not your he hand pushing on your head it's not your head pull pushing on your hand it's contact and it's support and that that contact breathes and it breathes wide so it has this sort of embracing quality of meeting the space behind you and either side of you and as you do this you should find the inside of the body at the front becoming more spacious uh, not necessarily more full of air but more spacious the breathing is going on. We're not trying to control our breathing. What we're doing is we're engaging with our environment to allow more spaciousness within. And it's as if the breathing is an expression of that engagement with space. And it breathes wide. And uh, there, is a, there is a pranayama called Sikhari that this describes. It's, um, it's when you... If you had good news, you would smile the breath in uh, and the sound seat. Okay. So you practice that a few times. And it, and it needs to come into, across the heart as well as across the brain and the, into the back of the body. So seat. Okay. Seat. Good news. Okay. And this is your embrace of space. This is your taking up of space. So you're listening to space. Your engagement with space. The release of the breath, instead of it being a, a collapse back into heaviness, which is, oh, okay, the release of the breath wants to be equally celebratory. And uh, the way I'm often describing this, the release of the breath it, uh, of this particular kind of breathing 
is it's a bit like after a nice cup of tea. So it's not a downward collapse, it's a, it's a celebration of the release of the breath. Sitkari. Okay. So once again, peripheral vision. Breathe wide into the into the space either side of you and behind you. And Imagine a surface for the head to touch, and as it touches that surface, it will send the heart forward slightly. If you've got your hands touching something, you can help the feeling of meeting the space either side of you. And all of this engagement with the space behind and either side of you will, will give you a sort of hollowness within the, the front of the body. But the, it's not that we puff up that space with breath. The action itself is the inhale seat. Retain for a moment whilst you meet space omnidirectionally, behind you, either side, above and below. And then as you release the breath, make it a satisfactory release of tension. Car, nice cup of tea. Ah. And what should happen, instead of the body collapsing down with the breath, what, what you should feel is the feeling of the ribs um, sort of falling away from the space that you've created. So you end up taller and more contained. One more time. Seat, meeting the space behind and either side. Retain for a moment whilst you take your attention to the places you're listening to and the space all around you and above you and below you. So that when you release tension, it's into that support. Okay. So if... Um, that's changed the sort of internal spaces of the body, then we're kind of in a position to start working with the limbs. And uh, Kishori's question was around um, uh, how to release tension in the front of the thighs, is it? And the backs of the knees. Um, how to release tension in the front of the thighs and contraction in the backs of the knees, uh, preventing kneeling. Um, okay, well, we won't try and kneel yet. Because what's happening is, as you kneel, um, your muscles are trying to stop you from kneeling. Because um, it's painful, perhaps because there's compromise in the knee joint. But first, first of all, we have to sort of get a sense of um, how to not work the thigh muscles. Um, and a way to do that is to do the old traditional thing of working the oppositional muscles. So instead of pulling a leg up with thigh muscles, um, you can rest your hands on a knee and push the thigh away into your hands. Um, don't pull yourself up too hard with it, but send your thigh away from you into your hands. And as you do so, you might find yourself contracting around the, the thigh still. But what I'd like you to do is to find the muscles behind. And it's more to do with the uh, outer buttock, I think. It's deeper than that. It's, um, if you want to know a bit of anatomy, which I'm not a huge fan of, um, it's, uh, uh, there's, a, there's a muscle called the obturator and gemellus, that sort of thing. And it anchors onto the thigh bone and pulls it round away from the groin, you see. Um, those muscles are involved. The, the inserts of the hamstring, I think, is involved. Whatever it is, it's the muscles around the side and the back of you that work. And this goes with the, um, the breathing thing I was talking about, because what it leaves is a space in the front, because these muscles don't have to be involved in, in that action at all. Um, you can work, and, and learning to differentiate between uh, the front and back of the thigh is kind of useful. Getting, getting yourself to um, engage with these um, outer muscles and these back muscles whilst leaving the thigh relaxed is a useful thing to do because it's kind of, um, well, it, it allows space in the groin and it allows, because when the thigh muscle contracts, you, you pull in the groin. So it allows space in the groin and when you allow space in the groin, you're releasing the psoas muscle when you release the psoas muscle, you liberate uh, breathing, that, that sort of thing. And it goes with the feeling of sitkari, as in we're meeting the space either side of us and behind us to breathe. And that creates a hollowness in the front of the body 
whilst we widen and work to be with the space behind our bodies, behind our backs, behind our leg. So if you smile the breath in, make it cheerful with a widening feeling, as if breathing into the back of the body, you'll find all of this space sort of stays relatively hollow, including in here. So you can imagine letting the breath moving into this space. And as you release the breath, keep doing the same job because it's doing that job that allows the breath to empty away from you. Seat car. And as the body comes together in the middle, um, you're left with support. You're left with central support that is more spacious. And that space is not limited to in the body. So it's also in, in here. Okay, so we'll do that on the other side just to get used to um, working these other muscles. The, the action itself of meeting the space behind, you include the leg. So the knee is trying to sort of pull away from you. But you're trying to do that with the muscles on the outside edge and the back of the thigh somewhere near, near the sit bones. Um, if you engage with that, then what happens in the back of the knee? It should be okay. Uh, you might find your foot working. But anyway, it's not just the thigh, it's the whole body. It's the breath. It's the arrival of the breath. It's the space either side and behind you. Seat. And engage with the leg with that. So those muscles get used to breathing. Those muscles that work on the outside there and behind you. And then as you engage with that, as you release the breath, but it's a satisfactory release. It's a, ah. If it's a pushy thing, you'll have a different experience. If it's a satisfactory thing, the muscles work in a different, with a different quality. So one more. Smile the breath in wide, meeting space either side and behind you. Use the uh, leg to try and sort of pull away from the hand. Seat. And as you release the breath, keep doing it, but it's a satisfactory release. Nice cup of tea. <sighs> keep using the leg. Good. Because all those muscles involved, my, my foot kicked in. I don't know if yours did it. Uh, but my foot kicked in as well. They're, they're all support muscles. They're all breathing muscles. They're all support muscles. Okay? So, um, for kneeling, it's the same thing. The, 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 oh, you can't see me. <laughs> um, the, the, the problem with... Um, uh, he's preventing kneeling, yeah. The, the problem with the... The action of kneeling, if, if you're thinking, if you're talking about sort of being down here um, or being up here even, let's, let's angle this up a bit, with a bit more distance so you can see me. The, the issue with it is you're trying to um, hold yourself down with these muscles. So these muscles pull and you're trying to pull yourself down with these muscles because you don't feel stable so the backs of the knees are pulling up so it's the opposite it's the opposite of supporting yourself it's 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 um trying to pull you down into the ground because you don't feel supported it's not the same as being supported by your touch so if you can get a feeling of the uh fronts of the feet the ankles on the ground the shins on the ground and engaging in that direction um now if uh be careful with this that means i've got a couple of minutes left um careful with this it's not j just the knee muscles careful with the, it's not the knee muscles it's meeting the space behind you feeling so if you can start on all fours okay with the feet actively pressing into the ground, uh, the toes pointing away from you so you get some sort of core responsiveness in the center of the foot that sort of draws in forwards towards where the knees are. And then there's a, a feeling as if there's a, a base, um, a surface behind the thigh bones here that you press into. And uh, doing so will press the knees to the feet into the ground, not the knee joints, the, the shin into the ground and if you add a sense of widening same here if you're lifting already it's over you have to meet the space behind you you have to meet the space behind you like just like we did with a celebration of the breath seat all of these actions and 
of course, you are taking some of your weight. The thighs will, will be working, but you'll also be working round here and in the backs of the thighs to help create space in here. Okay. So don't worry about the sensations of muscles. Those muscles are just doing a job. But what you need to be doing is uh, working with the space behind you and either side of you as you breathe, seat, car, as you release the breath. Nice, satisfied. <sighs> then what happens is these muscles will be challenged, but they don't stop breathing. You breathe wide. You release the breath. So this hollowness at the front continues to be with you. This spaciousness. Seat. Do it with the limbs as well. Seat. Do it with the feet as well. Seat. Ka. Away, away from the wings. Wide. So some central support arrives. That's if you're kneeling up. If you're kneeling down, it's exactly the same. Wide. Seat. Ka. Use your touch. Use your feet. Wide. Don't just lower your weight. That's the problem. If you feel supported by this, it will be intense with the thighs, but you're working in a way that is not problematic for your pelvis and your knees. The problem is when muscles kind of squish joints and push and pull on the spine. You see? Learning how to be um, supported does sometimes involve effort. Um, that effort needs to breathe. So I hope that wasn't too intense for you, Kishori. But it's, uh, you, you can back it off to a place where you can actually engage with the thing without any, any violence to yourself, you know? If, if there is a violence, it's because you're holding yourself up or holding yourself down. Okay, so you, you back off to a place of ease and then engage again. Okay, I think I've gone over time, so um, hopefully they haven't shut me down. Um, hope that was useful. Um, do drop comments below if you've found some use for it. Um, and you're watching this and you, and you enjoyed what happened, um, do share it. Uh, if, you, if you get it across to, if it, if it helps anyone, one other person, apart from those that are, of you that are watching, then you've done me a massive favor. Um, thank you. I very much enjoy this. I'm, I'm going to miss doing this for the next couple of weeks, uh, but I'll, I'll be having a lovely time on retreat and working with Diane. So, um, so yes, I shall say to our for now. This has been your Yoga Solutions Live broadcast coming you coming to you from my lovely garden oh by the way look i've uh, i've um put up a tarpaulin to show me where where my amazing garden building is going to be uh, it's marked it out yes so um everyone hold the vision for me i want that to be up and ready before next summer uh, it's going to be a, an amazing space sacred space for my yoga and um and also means I can be in the garden all year round. And uh, as you probably know, I'm quite obsessed with being in my garden. So that'll suit me down to the ground. Anyway, I, I'm, I'm really running over now, so I better stop. Um, I am Mark J. Aquaviva of the Aquaviva School of Yoga. Come and, come and see me in, in Edinburgh in October. Um, this is me signing off. Namaste. Thank you.